Hi, when I started doing podcasting a few months back, I didn't know what types of software I would need or what I need to learn about the whole hobby that I was about to get into. So uh, what I did is I put a list together for you. And this website, this URL, I'll put it in the description of this YouTube channel. Um, you can get to it and everything in it that I reference is clickable. So before you leave, please, 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 subscribe and like these uh, videos that I'm creating on YouTube. So that way um, these topics, the videos that I create in these topics, they bubble up in the search when um, people are looking for useful um, open source type of information like this. So this URL, I'll put it in the description. You can go there directly. And I wanted to point out that all the names here are clickable. You can see me dragging my mouse over it. Now, the very first application I use is Zoom. And why do I use Zoom to do my recordings? I have somebody else that's recording with me, so there's two of us. And I did a lot of research and the best I came up with was using Zoom, but using Zoom in a certain configuration. So you have to go into your preferences and there's one panel that says audio. And in that audio panel, you wanna turn on where it says original sound for musicians. It has a couple other things like high fidelity stereo and echo cancellation. I turn on high fidelity. I do turn on stereo, but I do not turn on echo cancellation because if I'm going to do any processing, I'm going to do it in one of these other applications, Audacity, that I'm going to talk about next. So while you're in the preferences in the audio panel and you turn that on, it doesn't automatically turn on for all your Zoom sessions. So when you start a Zoom session, there's gonna be new words up in the upper left-hand corner. At least that's how it looks on the Mac. And it says, original sound for musicians. And it's probably backwards as your camera, my fingers here is how I'm looking at it, but it says original sound for musicians. When you turn that on, it basically takes away a lot of the processing and you get the full sound. And that's what you want when you're doing podcasting because then you can process and chop it up how you want later on. The other thing you want to turn on in Zoom is under recording. There is a flag you can turn on where it says um, record each person into their own audio file. What that does is you can then process people, their voices differently. So for instance, if I'm making a noise and bumping a table while my uh, podcast partner um, Seth is talking, I can then just cut out my, you know, table knock and you don't, you know, ever hear it in the podcast, which is really great. Plus you also get the combined audio file. So if you didn't want to combine them later on and you just want the straight audio of everybody, you get that too. So the second tool I use is audacity. And this is where I do a lot of the processing that I just talked about in zoom. When I have audio, I will use it to cut things out. I will use it to, um, put noise gates in there to cut out background noise. I'll use it to um, normalize and compress signals and so forth. So this is open source. This is free to everybody. So I do recommend it. And on the video side, sort of the same exact thing, but to do it to video is a tool I use called Shotcut. And with Shotcut, you can do some audio processing, but I, I usually do it in Audacity and then I import the audio into Shotcut and then hook it to video when we're doing video podcasting. The next tool is Podbean, and they're more of a distribution network than they are a tool. They can build you a website around your episodes. They can host your MP3s for you. They can give you statistics on who's downloading them. And one of the nice thing is, is it's easy to make the feed so you can then push it out to other podcasts like um, Apple Podcasts or Spotify. The video side of things, what we like to use or we're trying to use is YouTube. So um, we're just starting to use this. I don't have a lot to report on it, but it's just a place where I can host our videos with our audio. Uh, so that way you can watch Seth and I behind the scenes talk as we make the podcast. Now a few other, the last three tools. The first one is Blender and I use Blender to make our podcast logo. Um, 
you'll see that there's some like lighting differences on the different parts of the logo. Blender makes you let you make 3D models and then move lighting around and add materials to things and then basically take a picture of it or a movie of it. And it's sort of like the animation of the movies that you see today. Blender would be one of the tools that you could use to make an animation like that. So you can also use it to make logos and that's what I used it for. It's also open source and free. So there's a lot of tools or there's a lot of um, YouTube videos and so forth out there on how to use Blender. To do the same thing for, or to edit images, to like scale them, crop them, do whatever. Um, we use GIMP, which is another open source tool. And it's just, it's kind of like the free version of Photoshop. And the last tool to play music or make little music clips and so forth, I made our intro and outro in the application, the online application called Soundtrap. And what that does is it lets you kind of move clips in and out, certain instruments in and out, and put together a little clip of um, music that, you know, your listeners might find interesting. So that's it. I appreciate you sticking around. And if you are still here, please do subscribe and like subscribe to this channel and like this video. And I appreciate it very much. And I hope to see you on our next video. All righty. Thanks. Bye.